Welcome everybody, welcome everybody. What a privilege and treat it is to be all together, to see all your faces. Ah, emotional for me to be back in this setting together, singing together. So, uh, most of you know, this is not a sing-along, this is not a concert, this is singing is a spiritual practice, which has its own intention, its own place. What does it mean? Singing as a spiritual practice means it's an embodied practice. It's something we're doing with our bodies. It's not passive. It's not about listening. Of course it is about listening, but it's not just about listening. We listen to ourselves, we listen to our hearts, and we have the great privilege to listen tonight to Rabbi Josh Warshawski. I ask you to open your hearts and to open your voices. Sing along. 
If the door is open and somebody else can hear you and it bothers you, close the door. This is, a, you know, in some ways, being on Zoom frees us to sing. But sing along and breathe, right? Stretch, breathe, use the opportunity. We open our hearts, we clear our heads from whatever else is going on. And again, we welcome with open hearts Rabbi Joshua Sofsky back to our community again. It's so wonderful to have you. Thank you, Josh. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Jack. Hello, everyone. Tu Bishvat Sameach. It's really wonderful to be back here with all of you. It's nice to get to be back in New Rochelle, at least in spirit, if not in body. Uh, Around two years ago, we were together on a Thursday night, just like this one, singing and opening up our, our hearts and our, and our spirits to connecting to each other. And just like Jack said, you know, we're, we're here to not just sing along, but to feel what, what that energy that we're about to create is all about. When we sing, it doesn't just it doesn't it doesn't just create the song. There's something else that's happening in that moment, and even in just that opening nigun, when I could you know see people swaying along and moving in that space, there's something that happens that forces even when we just sing with our with our voices that forces our whole body to move in some way. So I say actually leave the doors open so other people will want to wander into the room too and just check out what's going on. But just for the next hour or so, we're gonna sit together and and sing. Hopefully, you'll allow yourselves to to really open up your voices and. Especially, you know, like, like, like Jack said, here we are on Zoom, so, you know, there's actually a lot of power in being able to hear your own voice. In a space where before we were all singing together in one room, you can't pick out what your own voice sounds like. But here we have the opportunity to hear the power and the strength in our own voices. And it's also a really wonderful opportunity because it means that every note that you sing is exactly the right note because no one can tell you otherwise. Those are the right notes to be singing. The right notes for the right moment. So we're going to jump back in with that same nigun, jump right back into that energy. And while we're singing at this time, I'm going to ask you to just take a moment and, and notice what you notice about what's happening in your body, what's happening around you in the space. Feel what you feel. Music takes us to a whole bunch of different places, and nigun can take us to places that no words could possibly express. So I want you to think about where is this nigun taking you? Is it to a memory? Is it to a particular place? Is it to a particular feeling? And when we're finished singing it, just this next time through, maybe we'll take some time if anybody wants to share, whether that's sharing in the chat or sharing, you can unmute and, and share with us too. Either way would be wonderful, but we'll just start back in that nigun. Whenever you feel ready, whatever feel comfortable, hopefully you'll join in with me and sing along.
So would anyone, would anyone like to share? I don't know if that if that took anyone somewhere. If we were able to, to move into a particular moment, reminded of something, a particular emotion. If you want to unmute or if you want to just type it in the chat. Where 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 are you? Where are you right now? What are you bringing into this space with us this evening? I'm happy to share that I feel carried. I feel held up, carried. Mm. Held up, we feel carried. By the, like the melody has this physical blanket, like the hammock that's, that's pulling under you, lifting you up, swinging you back and forth. Love that imagery. Anywhere else? Placing us at a moment, reminding us of some other time, bringing anything else into the space with us this evening? I, uh, I sang this melody with a, a group of, of teen uh, song leaders and, and songwriting hopefuls a couple weeks ago, and uh, it, it was the first time that I had ever sung it with a group of people. I thought these teens would be a, a nice first first community for it, and um, one of them mentioned that to them it felt like a pirate song, that it was something it brought them like they were on the high seas, swaying back and forth, and they were felt like they were singing together. Um, and, and right now in like the, the teen world on the app TikTok, there's this this obsession right now with sea shanties, like Irish pirate songs that really are basically just zmirod, right? They're like the idea is there are all these people singing together and trying to to push away some of their fear of being on the high seas by singing these really catchy, really repetitive melodies over and over again. And they would sing them together wherever they were, and uh, and so that's what that's what this one kind of kind of felt like to me too. One of them said it was the uh, the Seven Seas Nigun, and uh, so we decided to call it the Shiva Tayamim Nigun, the Seven Seas Nigun. But you know, there's something the thing that's the most powerful thing about the Hebrew language. I, I love the Hebrew language. We, we talked about this last time we were together. There's just so much beautiful connection that can be created between words, uh, connected between letters with gematria, Hebrew numerology, just really, really powerful. And when you say the seven seas nigun in English, it just connotates the, just the seven seas. But in Hebrew, if it's shivatayamim, in addition to being the seven seas, it's also the seven days. It's a nigun that brings us all the way through the whole week, right? It carries us from day to day into Shabbat, the seventh day. And even just, right, that, just the idea that we can, in Hebrew, be able to, to open up the words to more possible meanings than we might just have intended originally. Um, to me, that, 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 that's powerful. So, all right, so thanks for, for joining in. It's nice to have, I feel like I have moving water in the background, Dove, with, your, uh, with the manatees swimming or whatever's over there. <laughs> I feel like we're actually able to be on the seas here. So, uh, otters maybe, otters? 
yeah, they look more like otters than manatees. <laughs> um, so we're going to just allow ourselves to, to move into a couple other melodies together. We'll have some moments of meditation, some moments to think about where we are in the story of our people. But on a Thursday evening, you know, the thing that I'm looking towards most is Shabbat. And uh, I'm really excited that we're going to get to spend a little time over the course of our, the surrounding Shabbat, bookending Shabbat together. And so I thought that we'd bring ourselves into one of the melodies of Shabbat, just so at least this group can feel really comfortable jumping into it um, when we sing it tomorrow for Kabbalat Shabbat as well. So this is, in some ways, it's a moment just for itself, but in other ways, it's also a moment to help us feel at home in the melody to be able to enter into it when we really bring in Shabbat in just a bit as well. And it's a melody for Yedid Nefesh. Um, and these words of Yedid Nefesh, right, there's, there's all these psalms, six psalms in Kabbalat Shabbat, leading up to Lachad Odi, one for each day, leading up to Shabbat. And before that, we have this poem that's just sort of placed here right in the beginning. And this poem has this deep, beautiful love poetry all about how I want to be connected to my soul, beloved, my, my soul's partner, and I want to be there as soon as possible. Maher ahuv kiva moed, hurry my love, the time is near. I got to get in, I got to be with you. I need to be the most deepest, truest love. I need to find it immediately. And when I thought about these words, and the, you know, I, when I was a kid growing up, there were just those, there were two melodies for Yedid Nefesh, and, and that was it, right? There's And then there was Yedid Nefesh Avarachaman. And those are the only ways that I could ever imagine hearing those words and singing those words. And I thought about the words, and I thought about where I am usually right before Kabbalat Shabbat. I've been running around all week. And I've been at the end of the week, I'm just trying to get all my cooking done. So I'm ready for Shabbat dinner. And I usually am going to be leading services somewhere. And I haven't really figured out what it is that I wanted to say. And I'm not ready to immediately step into the sanctuary and sing the deepest, truest, heart opening love poetry that I could ever experience. Right. My head and my heart are not in that in that moment. We're not in that place yet. And so, uh, you know, I've, and that's what the word, that's what the Siddur presents us. It presents us with this powerful connection that we need to have right away. And so um, I, I wanted there to be a melody where we could, uh, in the same way that we've just begun to do, enter within it into a nigun until we're feeling uh, that little change in our body, that physical change, uh, that settling of ourselves, uh, to be able to enter into those words and say them with our truest selves. So that's the melody that we're going to try to sing right now. It just begins with... It begins with uh, with a nigun. I'm going to put up the words up here on the side of my screen here, so we can take a look at them. And and we're going to sing them out. The nigun starts, and it actually pulls around to the third line of each of each verse. The nigun pull, comes back in there. And these words, every single verse has this just this beautiful, beautiful imagery and language. Even to the second verse, Hadur naez ziv haolam, O glorious radiant spark of the universe, nafshi cholat ahavatech. My soul is sick with longing for you. And, you know, what does it mean for the way that we can say these words? They sound so beautiful when we sing them in the Hebrew, but if we really look at them and understand them, how much more so can we allow them to open up our hearts to the words that, that our hearts really want to say? So we'll start just with this nigun, and we'll try and make our way into Yedid Nefesh all the way through. Kiva Moed, the time is coming soon. Shabbat is almost here. It's arriving. A thought has blown the marketplace away, and Shabbat is coming soon. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, 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 ay,
Good evening, everyone. Um, I want to I just want to share a kavana and invite you to set an intention for the remainder of our time together tonight. Um, and I'm thinking about, you know, it's Tubishva, but I'm thinking, I'm already thinking about Shabbos. I'm already thinking about uh, Vishalach, that this is the Parsha in which we sing. And we sing after the sea is split, and this miracle, we've left Egypt, we've been seen by God. And the Torah that the Torah in that moment says, Az Yashir Moshe Uvene Israel. Then uh, the people of Israel and Moshe sang. But the grammar is very weird in this Pasuk because Az suggests then and Yashir is future tense. So the rabbis are troubled by this. Does it mean then at some point in the future they will sing? But clearly from the context, this was something that had already happened. And I wanna share the Shem Mishmuel, who is uh, a rabbi who died in the 1920s, who was a mystical rabbi. Um, he sort of played around with the question of when, when did the singing occur? Was it in the moment that the sea split? Was it sometime in the future? Um, and he quotes Rashi. He starts out by quoting Rashi. And Rashi says, when did they sing? Allah bilibam sheyashir. That it arose in their bilibam, in their hearts. It really was in their minds. Um, they were moved to sing because of what they witnessed. And he kind of maps this on to this whole other conversation in our tradition, uh, which is about, as we know, uh, Friday night as part of Kabbalah Shabbat, when we sing Yedid, when we sing Lecha Dodi, we say Sof Maaseh Machshavat Tchila, that the, the end of creation, which was of course Shabbat, was actually the thought from the beginning. So what we had at the end was really planned from the beginning. And he plays around with the difference between these two ways of experiencing the world, right? One is saying what happened was actually what I planned to happen. It may have appeared to happen on day seven, but I actually thought about creating Shabbat in the very beginning. And he plays with this idea, reading that against this notion that this miracle happened. And in that moment, in their hearts, in their minds, in their souls, arose this need to sing, not because it was planned, but because they were moved by what was happening. And, you know, I, 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 when, when, whenever we get together, singing as a spiritual practice, I try so hard to remind us that we're actually trying to practice something. Uh, and practice takes work. And part of what we're practicing here, as Jack said in the beginning, it's not a sing-along, it's not a concert, it's not a passive thing. But it's a practice of using the singing and the listening to express and notice where we are in this moment. So it reminds me, we're going to have a moment or two to, to figure that out for ourselves before, uh, before Josh continues singing. But I remember going to a Randy Newman concert and there was a song you know, he would play all these songs that like you, you would never hear again at another Randy Newman concert. And I once heard a song he sang about his father. It was incredibly moving. And I remember going to another Randy Newman concert and all I thought was like, is he gonna play the song? Is he gonna, I was waiting and waiting. You know, I'm sure you've had this experience. You know, maybe you're coming tonight and you're like, I hope that Josh sings I mean, maybe you have your favorite Joshua show. And every time he starts a song, you might think to yourself, oh, but what about, right? What about what I want? I came here for that song. Um, and what I noticed that it was that he never played the song, Randy Newman. And if you had asked me, like what connected one song to the next, I couldn't have told you because I was so focused on, um, you know, from the beginning, I wanted something, an experience, and I missed everything that happened because all I was waiting for was that thing, that thing to happen. And so I want to invite all of us to get into the Az Yashir mind frame, 
which is let go of expectations, let go of what it is that we think we've come here for, and to try to listen to what's arising, the song that is arising in your heart. Um, I came here really excited, and I am still excited, but I will share that. Um, when Josh mentioned that we were together, I think two years ago, I just had this moment of remembering what it felt like to be in this room together and fill it with music and singing. And I suddenly felt like, wow, I really miss, I really, really miss being together. And so that's just what arose for me. And instead of pushing it away, I wanna invite all of us to just get in touch with what's come up for you, where you are in this moment, what song needs to sing from your heart, from your minds, and then to set an intention to focus on that for the remainder of our time together. So let's just sit, we're just gonna sit for, for two minutes, uh, two minutes of um, silence. If you're able to put your feet flat on the ground and, and sit straight up, Try to become aware of what's happening in this moment, what you're feeling. You wanna, um, if you're able to sort of relax your shoulders, but have a posture of dignity. And we'll start now some silence. And after about two minutes, Josh will pick up with the next, uh, the next part of the evening.
Boris Nigun is a Nigun by uh, Batya Levine, who's an amazing musician and songwriter, Nigun writer. And it's called the Tubishvat Nigun, which I thought would be appropriate to sing today because it's Tubishvat. And uh, to me, this Nigun represents rootedness. You can feel it really planting down at the bottom and then reaching its branches all the way up. So if you can keep your feet planted on the ground the way that you had them before, if you want to move out your arms at some point, just allow yourself to loosen up your body as we sing this a few more times. I was... Rabbi Shuck, when you were talking, I was trying to think back to when I learned this this melody, uh, and it was at um, a Hadar Rising Song Institute with Batya in uh, a very small chapel, smushed very, very close together, which is the very opposite of where we are right now. But I'm hoping that if we're all having our feet planted on the ground, we're all reaching out our arms and keeping our bodies loose. There's a way that we can channel that same energy and then send it out to each other. Plant it for ourselves as well. And plant seeds for the future when we can hopefully soon get back in those rooms together and feel that same energy. But for now, this is what we have. And it's nice to get to see everyone's faces and find a moment to close my eyes, but then to open them up and still see all of you here together. So we'll try it from the beginning. Come in whenever you feel ready. Uh, it's one of those nigun, nigunim that just uh, it doesn't have an end. It could just it could just go on and go on and go on, uh, which is a nice thing about it. But also, how do you ever how do you ever pull yourself away? So um, I wanted to share one or two more melodies together. 
There are melodies that are two texts from the liturgy <clears throat> that have helped me sort of think about what it is that we're doing when we're engaging in the endeavor of prayer. Because there's a lot more than that's happening than just reading our way through the sea door or singing our way through the sea door. The more that we can understand the words that we're trying to say, the more that they can open up. It's just the sea door is a guidebook. It's not, it's not the end of the prayers. It's the beginning of the prayers. So it has to open us up to where the rest of the prayers are inside of us. Because if they don't come from us, then we're just repeating other people's words, right? These aren't particularly holy words. They're other words that other people wrote and put together in this order. So we have to infuse it with something from us or else it's just the echoes of prayers from a thousand years ago, as opposed to something new and ancient at the same time. And I love that idea of, of the fact that we're not always ready to sing. And the Az Yashir, it was when we were, we got to this moment and we didn't know what else to do but to break out into song. Right? We had just had this transcendent moment and you know, there's, there's more than one moment in, in, our, in our canon of a crossing of a body of water with miraculous things happening. Right? In the book of Joshua, the people of Israel cross the Jordan River. They put these magic stones in the middle and the water blowers so that they can all cross. It's a miraculous event and they cross and nobody talks about it because there's no song that's associated with it, right? The, when we cross the Red Sea, there's Az Yashir, we sing this moment and there's this powerful transcendent thing that's happening. That's, that's what happens when something powerful happens, we are, we are moved to sing. And there's another really powerful Hasidic interpretation of those words, Az Yashir, that comes from Rav Daud of Kutsk. And, uh, and he teaches, he quotes a verse from the Psalms where he says, Kidmu Sharim Achar Nognim. Right, first came the singers and then came the instrumentalists. And what was it about the singers and the instrumentalists? The instrumentalists, the musicians, these are the ones that are like Yodea Nigun. They're ones that really know how to, how to jam and how to play. They know their melodies. And when the Israelites crossed the sea, those were the angels, right? They just, the angels came and they wanted to sing before God. And God said to them, no, hold on a second. My children are going to sing first. That's why it says, Az Yashir Moshe. God says, no, Moses is going to sing right now. Hold on a second. The people haven't sung. Moses hasn't sung. It's not Azshar, right? Moses and the people are going to sing the song right now, not you. But the question is why? Why do the people of Israel get precedence over the angels? And the answer is that the angels are always ready to sing. The angels have something within them that they're always there. They're always in that moment. They always have the energy. They're always feeling like they can, they're always, they always feel like they can sing, which is not so of human beings. Right? Maybe there's the, 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 the person every now and then that feels like their life is a musical. I sometimes feel like my life is a musical. But not everybody is ready to sing all the time. And so God said, you know, if the people of Israel are in this moment, if they're, if they're moved to sing, if they have excitement and elation and desire, we can't let it pass them by. We have to let them sing right now. They have to sing right now if they're ready to sing. Right? The words, here's what he says. He says, we have to be ready. Only at the time when it like stirs up inside of them, in their insides, this like this need and this energy to sing. And, and you know, we, we can't always get to that place. But what does it feel like when we when we can get there? We have to take advantage of it. We have to do something with it. And and I think that that's exactly what you know, Rabbi Shak, what you're talking about with with setting up a practice of song, of making yourself ready to know that whenever that moment does come, you're going to know what to do with it. You're not going to be lost. You're not going to feel like I'm overwhelmed. I don't know what's, what's going to happen in some way. I don't know how I want to feel. I don't know how I want this community to feel. You're going to be ready for that moment because you've been primed for it. You've practiced for it. The people of Israel, they weren't ready. They had, they had just left Egypt. This was their first moment of freedom. But the first act that they do as a free people is to sing. And, uh, and that song, is a, it's calling out, it's a collection, it brings them together as a community. And uh, so, I don't know if they expected that there was going to be an answer to their song or what, but they, they called out. The first act of a free people was to call out in song. So we're going to sing these words, uh, which is one of the first prayers in the, in our, in the Sidur in the morning. Um, you know, when we were together two years ago, I, I, I got to sing it together with uh, somebody who I see on the call here. Um, Rina's sister came up and she sang it with me. And uh, so we're going to try and sing it out. It, it's called Va'anit Filati. I am a prayer. Right? In that moment when the energy comes up to you, 
you know what to do. You turn your whole body, your whole self into that prayer. And so when you call out, right, what we're asking for with this prayer is, Aneni be'emeti shecha, right? Answer me. I don't need the words of an answer. I just need the feeling of truth that I know that this is what I'm supposed to be doing in this moment. I need to feel comfortable in this action together. So we're just going to try and sing it a couple of times and enter into that feeling of goodness, that matov, how good it is to be able to, to feel like this is what we're supposed to be doing in this particular moment.
So um, I brought one more one more melody for us to for us to share this evening. It's actually one of the the first Jewish melodies that I ever wrote, and I don't play it very often. It's that one about my dad. No, I'm not Randy Newman. Um, and I brought it because I felt like it connected with uh, with this this moment of figuring out what we're doing in prayer. But really about what each one of us individually, I thought for us to leave thinking about what is our own, what is our own direction, what is our own purpose when we're entering and leaving these spaces. The words that we're about to sing come from the, the end of the Amidah, Elohai Nitzor Lishoni Meira. And they're an individual's prayer. In the Talmud, in Masachet Brachot, there's like two whole pages that are dedicated to the various different prayers of different rabbis when they would say these prayers, why they would say these prayers. And then a couple of these prayers became part of our canon. They became part of the liturgy. They got stuck on the Sidor somewhere and, and people liked them, right? They're the, these are the words of human beings. And I love that they're the words of human beings because that means that we can, we can craft words that are just like these words. These words are words of someone's heart. And even if you add one word or change one inflection, you somehow have made that your own. Creative Commons copyright so these words are all about a, a direction for ourselves God guard my tongue from evil my lips from speaking lies let those who curse me let my soul be silent let my soul be like dust to all Right, let me not be of consequence to other people. Let them, let them not even worry about me. Let them not think about me. I'm just here for me. Tach li bi Open up my heart to your Torah uv mitzvot techa, to your dof nafshi, and to your commandments. Let my, let my soul chase after them. This word lir dof, is, I really love this word. It, it's a word that in general in the Bible is, is people on horseback, like chasing after someone. And so, right, the imagery of your soul just running, at, it's not just looking for the mitzvot, it's not just walking after the mitzvot, it's, it's chasing, chasing after the mitzvot. And in this particular personal prayer, we're asking God to, to guard our lips from evil, to guard our mouth from lies, to make our heart, our heart open to God's Torah. And we have similar words that occur in the very beginning of the service. When we say, Mi ha'ish ha'chafetz chaim, who's the person that, that is looking for life? Ohev yamim lirotov, the one who loves the days of their life and wants to find goodness. That person will netzor l'shon cha'amera. Will, they will guard their tongue from evil. Ulsfatecha midabir mirba. And you should guard your own, your own lips from, from speaking lies. And, and it's interesting that in that beginning moment, we say, you got to do it. You guard your own tongue from evil. You guard your own mouth for lies. And here, we're asking for help. For guidance because sometimes we feel like we can't do that on our own but the idea is that that just by placing this out into the world whether this is a request for God or whether it's just naming it manifesting this idea finding a way to to guard our lips towards the words that we want to be saying or is the path that we want to relate re, to what that we want to be on walking forward getting to join in together in prayer so we're just gonna sing these words a whole bunch of times until we feel like they're fitting in Fitting into our lips, opening up our hearts. Elohai nitzor l'shoni mira. Feels like this. Elohai nitzor l'shoni mira. Usvata mira ber mirma. Let's 
Thank you, Josh. I want to say a couple of words because I'm so moved by this experience. First of all, I'm going to call an audible. Josh, just you'll take us out with some music. So we end with just music, not my words, please. Well, if you want to reprise something. But I wanted to say something. I look at the individual boxes. Can you hear me all right? You can hear me? Okay. I look at the boxes and I realize I feel so connected to each of you. It's really very moving to me. There's great love. I feel it. I feel great love for each. And still, I also feel that we've created something over the years that's magical. It's important. And I feel like I'm responsible for it. And we invite Josh in, and it's a little scary. We bring an outsider in, and suddenly it's not just us. 
and I felt like we're vulnerable. And Josh, of course, cradles us and lifts us up to a place that's just, just so beautiful. So I just want to thank Josh and each of you for a beautiful evening. Shalom, everyone. See you soon.